Hello all. So I installed this mini split unit. It's a 12,000 BTU Pioneer mini split and they need to run the electrical wiring. So I thought I'd make a video on it and how you go about doing this. And this video is not about installing the mini split. I made videos on that on how you go about installing these mini splits. I'll put a link down below if you need to check those out. But this video is only going to be about running the electrical to a mini split and your options for doing that. And there's going to be a few things you're going to need. I'll put links down below for everything I'm looking at here. So if you need to check out anything I'm looking at, just check the description below and I'll put links down there. The first thing we're going to need, we're going to need a whip. This is going to go between the, the disconnect box and the mini split unit to just run our wires between these two. You could buy these without the wires and run your own wires, or you could buy them already preset with wires run, however you want to do it. But all this is is a six foot wiring whip. And next you're going to need a disconnect. And this is going to be mounted on the wall up over by the unit. And all this does is disconnect power to the mini split in case there's an emergency or somebody needs to work on it or something like that. All they got to do is pull this out and it disconnects power going to the unit. And of course, you're going to need wiring and a breaker. Now, first of all, always check your manual to see what wire size you need and what the breaker size is going to be. I'm installing this 12,000 BTU unit and it calls for 12 gauge wire and a 20 amp breaker. This is very common for like 9,000 BTUs or 12,000 BTU units. Although some of them are getting really efficient, sometimes they call for 14 gauge wire and 15 amp breaker. But like I said, always check your manual. That way there's no worries and you're using the right wire size and the right breaker size. So the next thing to worry about is gonna be the conduit that you run the wire in. And for me, I need to run it down here. I'm gonna have to run it along this wall. And right here is gonna be the panel that I need to go into. So I need to run it from there all the way around, up and over, and up and into this panel. And so the first type of conduit you can use is you can use this liquid tight. You could just run this to the mini split and to your box and then run your wire through this. This is a good quick option. It doesn't require much work. You basically can just lay it on the ground and run it to the unit. But it's really only a good option if it's less than like 10 feet run to the pole. If it's longer than that, then it's best to use PVC or metal but your first option is use this liquid tight, which is the way I'm gonna connect that whip. So you'll see more on this when I connect that whip. And your next option is to use PVC. And this is a good option. Basically, you just dig down. You got to dig down like 18 inches. You run this to your electrical panel, and then you run it to the disconnect, and then you pull your wire. And so this is a good option. This is the option I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using PVC. Since there is other mini splits installed, and this is what they used before, so this is what I'm gonna be using here. And it's a very common option. The next option to use is going to be metal. Now this is going to be the least common option people use, but you can use this. You can run this along walls and things like this. You can't run this along walls because it sags and it gets burn marks on it from the sun. It'll turn black and things like this. So if you do want to run along the wall like this, you need to use this metal conduit. You need to screw it onto the wall with little attachments and run it around to your box. You will need a pipe bender and basically you bend the pipe like this. And wherever there's a bend or something, you're going to have to bend it and run it to where you need it to go. But metal conduit is a good option, especially if you don't want to dig. You can run this along the wall, get watertight fittings, and you won't have no issues. That's a good option. And so these are going to be the three main types of options to run to the electrical panel, at least on the outside. Now, you can run it onto the inside if you want to crawl up inside the attic and pull wire down to the electrical panel and then over to the mini split and come down the wall and come out right close to where it's at. But that is another option is that you pull the wire from the box through the building over to where the mini split's located. And so that's basically it. That's the four basic options that you have to run the wiring from that electrical panel over to the mini split. You always want to think it out on how you're going to do it. Every install is going to be different. Sometimes it's best to run it through the building. Sometimes the pole will be like four or five feet away and you could just use this and just run right to it. Sometimes it's going to be impossible to dig down to run PVC, so you're going to have to go along a wall, so you want to use metal. Like I said, it's always going to be different, but for this install, I'm going to be using PVC and burying it under the ground. If you do use PVC, be sure not to get the white water pipe stuff. The white PVC is for water, and this gray stuff is for electrical, so be sure to get that right. You're also going to need to get elbows and everything like that, which I'll go over. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that disconnect so that I know exactly where everything's running to, where I'm going to run the PVC up and everything like that. And these are really easy to mount. Basically, you just get some screws. I got these wood screws here. I got some washers just in case because I'm not 100% sure about these holes holding that in right there. But basically, you just want to get it onto the wall and mount it somewhere right around within like four or five feet of the mini split. You want it to be close to the unit 
That way the power can be immediately removed from the unit if something was to go wrong. But basically just find yourself a stud and just screw it right to the wall. That's basically it. And it is a good idea to go ahead and knock out these inserts. Before you screw it on the wall, I'm gonna do that too. I'm using three quarter inch pipe. So I'm gonna knock out the inserts to fit that. But basically you just screw it on the wall. That way it's really solid on there. It's not gonna move. And we can run our wire from the unit and from the pole to this box. So that's where I'm at right now. And I'll be back. Okay, so I got the disconnect on the wall. I got it bolted on there, just bolted on real good. I also have my inserts knocked out. I'm gonna have three quarter inch coming up from here from the PVC, and then I'm gonna have half an inch coming out this side going to the mini split. And so that's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and run this whip between the mini split and the disconnect. These are really easy to use. This is what's called liquid tight right here. And you can actually run this all the way to the pole. Some people do that. And then you run your wiring through it. Each side is just gonna have a screw. So like I'm gonna bolt this on here and this side right here just pushes straight on. So for example, like on this piece, you just push this straight on like that. Tighten it up a bit and it gets on there real tight and then you just screw it on to the other side. So this stuff is really easy to use. A lot of people use it. And like I said before, this is another option to run to your pole, but mainly it's a really good option to run from the mini split unit itself up to the disconnect. So I'm gonna use this whip and install it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the disconnect wired in and these are really simple to wire in. Basically, this is gonna be coming from the mini split. So I got the wires running through over to the mini split. Basically what's going on here, you got L1 and L2. If I need to tighten up that L1 before I close it up, but basically that L1 and L2 is going to have the main voltage you're coming in along with ground. So when the power is applied here, that L1 and L2 is going to have 240 volts. If this was a 115, 120 unit, then you would have 115, 120 on those two. This is a 240 volt unit. I'm going to have 240 volts coming in on L1, L2 along with this ground. And as you can see, I just attached a screw on the side. Just as pushes right on, it screws on. It's pretty simple to hook up right there. And this whip, along with the wires, is running up to this disconnect right here. And this is pretty simple too. This side over here is, is gonna have one leg, and then this side over here is gonna have another leg. You got your ground wire. And when you insert this on the on, as you can see right there, it says on. When you insert that on on, it's just gonna complete these legs and these legs. When you pull this out, it's gonna disconnect these legs and these legs. It's fairly simple to hook up. You should go watch some dedicated videos on just hooking up a disconnect. And so that's where I'm at. I got the mini split wired in. I'm gonna be closing this up. And then next I'm gonna be running the PVC conduit around to the electrical box. If you were just using this liquid tight, you would just come from here and just run straight to the box. Or if you're using that metal, you would run that tight straight out to the box. And so that's basically it. That's where I'm at. And I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back and i got it mostly dug out i might have to touch up or go down a little bit at one or two spots but you're supposed to get it down to 18 inches at least in my area so i'm basically down to 18 inches i got it dug and i just dug this trench out all the way around to where i'm going to be running my electrical up to the panel and so the next step to do is to run all this pvc pipe and glue it all together you're going to need some fittings and some glue Basically, if you'd use the PVC, you need like these 90s to go around corners. And you're also gonna need some PVC glue to glue everything together. And also right here, where each panel goes, you need these right here so that you can put them up and in and you can glue your PVC pipe right to it. These have little screws and they'll just screw on to the other side and just screw right in. We're gonna need one here and we're gonna need one on the other panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the other panel and see where I can tap into over there. But the next step is to run all the PVC pipe everywhere around. And one thing about running the wire is that some people will pull the wire through as they're gluing this PVC pipe together. But I have heard from some old electricians that it's never good to pull the wire and then glue the pipe because that glue can drip down onto the wire. And I've heard that can cause issues. And so I don't ever do that. I always pull the wire. But I do know people who will push all the wire through and then they'll come back and glue everything together. But however you want to do it, the next step to do is to run all the PVC pipe around through your hole and up to your boxes. So that's where I'm at, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, and I'm out at the main panel where the breaker's going to go. And I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to put the breaker and where I'm going to bring in the PVC pipe. And basically, I'm going to need to knock out one of these holes down here. I'm thinking this one, when I look at it, that's what I'm thinking. 
either this one or this one, even though this one might be too close to the stucco, I might not be able to get my pipe up very easily. So I'm probably gonna go with this one, but basically I need to knock one of these out so that I can put an insert in there so I could glue the pipe to the other side. And I'm also gonna put this breaker in. There's a 20 amp breaker. And of course, when you're dealing with this, you gotta be really careful because these are all gonna be live. You can watch some other videos on how you can wire in a breaker and things like that. But basically I got my breaker right here and I'm gonna put it right here. There's an open spot right there, you can see. So I'm gonna put it right here. One side slides in right there. And then this other side, just gonna push right in. So, and so there's my breaker. Be sure that it's off. And basically what's going on here is over at the mini split where it says L1 and L2, that's where those two wires are gonna go. You're gonna have like L1, L2. It really doesn't matter which leg you use on the breaker, but you're gonna have L1 and L2 coming to the breaker. And then you're gonna have your ground wire going to this bar right here. So you see where that ground, where that's green right there, that green wire and all these other ground wires are going to this bar. That's how this is gonna be wired in because that's a 240 unit. If you happen to have a 110 unit, you would only have a single breaker. You'd have one line coming in. You'd have your ground and your white wire running to the bar on the side. But this is 240, so this is the way I'm gonna be running it. If you're confused how these breakers hook up and how they work, there's a lot of electrical videos on that on how you hook them up and how they work and things like that. But basically that's where I'm at with this. And so I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I got the pipe all run. I got it run down in the ground. Just need to tighten up this side right here on these. I need to tighten that up better. But basically that's it. You just run this PVC pipe in the ground, run around from that disconnect all the way up and over into your panel. And so the next step is gonna to be to bury all that pipe. But then once I bury it, then I'm gonna to have to pull the wire through PVC pipe. So that's where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna go and bury all this pipe and I'll be right back. All right, so I got it all buried and all the dirt packed back in real good. So that pipe's all buried now. And the next thing I need to do is go ahead and pull the wire with the fish tape. This is easier to do if you have two people, one person to feed it to you, and you can pull it or vice versa or something like that. I don't have anybody over here to help me right now, but if you do have another person to help you, then it's much easier. But basically I'm just gonna feed that fish tape in all the way through the pipe. So I'm gonna attach the wires on the other end and then I'm gonna pull it back up and through. So that's where I'm at and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my fish tape fed through. I pushed it through on this side. And on this other side, up and over here, I, I got this other side hooked up to the hook on the fish tape. And I'm just going to go over on the other side and I'm going to pull it through and pull it real slowly and come back over here and feed it a little bit. and Just pull it on through. That's where I'm at right now. So once I get it fed through, I'll be back. Okay, so I got the wire pulled through. Here it is on this side. It pulled all the way through the pipe. And so the next thing to do is to hook up to the breaker on this side and finish hooking up that disconnect on the other side. Okay, so I got my breaker wired in. And like I said before, if you never wired in a breaker, it's a good idea to watch some videos on how breakers work and how you install them. But basically this white and red wire is running to L1 and L2 inside the mini split. And my green wire back here is going right to that ground bar. And so I'm going to have 240 coming in on the white and red wire, and I'm going to have ground coming in on the green wire. And that's basically it on these 240 units. If you don't like to use red, you can use black. You can get black wire and run it alongside the white wire and run it up to your 240. The main thing is that when these two wires go to the mini split, they're going to that L1 or L2 or the 240 on your unit. And of course, the ground wire is going to ground. But that's basically it on this side. This panel is all wired in. And the next thing to do is go wire in that disconnect, double check everything, and then fire up the mini split. So I'll be back. Okay, so I got this disconnect wired up. And just to show you how this is going, basically one side is gonna be like L1 and the other side is gonna be like L2. If you put a meter from this side to this side, you would have 240 volts. And then of course your ground. Now hopefully you can see in there and see how that works. Like I said, watch some videos on these disconnects if you need to and the breakers to see how these all wired up, but it's fairly simple. Just have one side with one leg and the other side with the other leg. And once you insert this the right way up where it says on, then you'll have power going to the unit. But when you insert this, that's gonna provide power. And if it's removed, then you won't get no power. So that's all wired up. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the mini split. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I turned it on and it's all working good. There's no issues. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Or if you can see that fan spinning inside of there, but it's all working. There's no issues going on. 
but that's basically it and how you go about wiring up a mini split or one way you can go about wiring up a mini split one thing i should have mentioned is that it's a good idea to check all your voltages before you fire up the mini split so if you could check them at like l1 and l2 be sure you're getting the right voltages to the mini split before you start it up you can also check them up to the disconnect and things like that just to verify that you got the correct voltages going into the mini split that's always a good idea but that's basically it i just wanted to give a basic video on how you go about wiring up a mini split so if you have any questions ask me down below and I'll try to answer them. If you have anything to add, comment down below also. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.